The city of Cape Town will light up Table Mountain, the city hall and government avenue in purple in honor of the late Anglican Archbishop Desmond Tutu. ENC reporter Aisha Ismail joins us now live from Cape Town. Aisha, it looks very purple there. It seems as though the lights have been lit in memory of Archbishop Desmond Tutu. That is indeed so, Heidi, and we're just trying to see when exactly um, Table Mountain will be lit, and that's going to take a bit of time before we're able to see that. But let me step out of shot so our viewers can see how beautiful the City Hall is looking. And the City Hall is directly opposite the Grand Parade, and on Wednesday, the City of Cape Town will hold a memorial service, an official memorial service, and it will also be an interfaith service because that is what, what Archbishop Desmond Tutu was all about. But it's not only going to be about um, you know, a religious service. There will also be some music and dance because, as you know, the Archbishop loved his music and he also loved dancing. So it's going to be a full program on Wednesday, and that is expected to start at 6 p.m., and what we also do know that the funeral service will take place on Saturday at St. George's Cathedral. Aisha, you've been out and about today and perhaps we can just ask uh, our colleague to just show us um, the City Hall once more so we can actually just see how it's been lit up. But perhaps just tell us what you've been hearing today and uh, the fond memories that people have of the Archbishop. Well, Heidi, um, as you know, throughout the day, we've been speaking to the mayor of Cape Town, the premier of Cape Town. We've been speaking to Patricia DeLille, who was a former mayor of Cape Town, and we had a very close relationship with her. But we also spoke to ordinary people in Cape Town who came to St. George's Cathedral to come and sign the... Um, condolence books that were set out outside the, um, the cathedral. It was very interesting to just look at the messages and to read the messages and people talking about the love that Archbishop Desmond Tutu had for just about everybody and one woman actually said to me it didn't matter whether you were Christian Muslim whether you were Jewish or whether you were an atheist the Archbishop loved us all equally and we also know that the Archbishop was very outspoken. He was outspoken during the bleak days of apartheid, but he was also outspoken during democracy. And you will recall how he, um, you know, he, he, he put the ANC on notice. He said to them, we are watching you, we are warning you. And this was in relation to um, corruption, particularly during the time um, of Jacob Zuma's uh, reign. And he was not one to shy away from making what would have been perceived as controversial statements. He spoke his mind, he spoke his truth, and people respected him for that. And it's going to be very interesting to see how, um, you know, in terms of whether, remember the Dalai Lama was invited to come to South Africa and he was a very, very close friend of Archbishop Desmond Tutu. He was then denied entry into the country and um, I was also just talking to some people earlier and they were saying, they were just wondering whether the Dalai Lama will be allowed to um, enter South Africa because that is um, highly contentious and political. But we'll wait and see what happens. But as I said, ordinary people talking about the loss to this country, the loss to South Africa of somebody whom they said, you know, after Nelson Mandela died, who was regarded as the father of the nation, they regarded Archbishop Desmond Tutu as the father of the nation, the man who also helped us, helped to liberate us, he was part of the truth and reconciliation. And of course, you know, we can safely say that we in South Africa has now lost our moral compass. Certainly. I think um, when we interview people, most of them speak about how the moral compass has now been lost. Uh, Aisha, I'm curious to know if you have any fond memories or interactions with the Arch. Heidi, I do have fond memories of the Arch. Um, you know, as a young reporter, he was always so approachable. And also as a young activist, when we, during the, the days of the... Um, you know, during the state of emergency, when we were marching down Adley Street and Wales Street, it was Archbishop Desmond Tutu who opened the doors of the cathedral for us to come and seek refuge when we 
were shot at and, and, and you know, the police came and baton charged us. And he would open the doors and we would be able to go inside and he would counsel us and pray while we were inside the cathedral. We would also see the Archbishop out and about in the streets also and attending funerals of ordinary people. And I recall the one day I decided to go and attend a church service at, at, at the cathedral. And he did notice me and afterwards he said to me, are you not going to ask me any questions today? <laughs> and I said to him, Father, I just came to the cathedral just to come and find some peace. But yeah, very, very fond memories of him. He was a lovely person. He was the archbishop not only for Anglicans, but he was the archbishop for all of us. Mm, certainly. Thank you so much for sharing uh, some of your fondest memories of Archbishop. We appreciate it. We'll cross over to you a little later on. Aisha Ismail is out in Cape Town for us.